Bonnie Kent. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and the owner of Keys and Happiness, and I have a very special guest with us today. This is my dad. Lee Scheifler is going to teach us how to carve a chicken. The last time my parents were visiting, we cooked a chicken and I struggled with cutting it up. And so if anybody else also has this difficulty, maybe you don't make a whole chicken, but if you ever have the opportunity to cook a Thanksgiving dinner, making a chicken is really similar to cooking a turkey, except it's on a smaller scale. So the technique for cutting up and carving a chicken is gonna be very similar to what you would use with a larger bird. Yeah, and so we're gonna use a, a a cutting board that has some grooves around the edge because you'll notice that once we start cooking the bird should be juicy if we've cooked it correctly and so we don't want all those juices to to get all over and make a mess and then the other thing you'll want to make sure we have are a couple of pans nearby to go ahead and put the the cooked meat into i always recommend to cook this based on temperature and not based on time because the size of the bird will make a really big difference in how long it takes to cook Typically you would uh, cook the bird for about 15 to 20 minutes per pound, but that can vary quite a bit depending on if it just came out of the refrigerator, if it was at room temperature before you put it into the oven. So the other, you'll want to try to find the deepest, the thickest part of the, of the bird to put the thermometer in. And this could be tricky to do when it is cold. So you'll want to put it, we put it here uh, really close in between the, the leg and the breast here and, and sort of the, the thickest part. But the first time the thermometer went off and told us that it was at temperature, I moved that thermo thermometer around a little bit because sometimes it's difficult to get it in the right place. So that's my biggest recommendation. After you think that it's up to temperature, double check it in a couple different spots to make sure that the poultry is fully cooked. A fully cooked bird uh, reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That's for both food safety purposes and also for the best texture and quality of the meat. Overcooked bird is going to be very dry and lose a lot of flavor, but that 165 is food safe, but will also taste really good. So the trussing here, what we've done is we're holding these legs in together. So to truss the bird, you'll take a, a piece of string about three feet long and you'll put it underneath the bird and then wrap it around the wings to hold those in tightly. And then we'll wrap it around the legs, turn the bird over and wrap it around the tail here and then tie it in a knot. And I cut off the extra string so we didn't have any extra. So that will help it again, cook a little bit more evenly and keep all of those juices sealed in. So let's go ahead and start carving. Where do you start when you start with this bird? Well, for, first we're going to take the string off to release the trussing, but I'm going to remove each wing on each side. I'll probably orient this bird basically towards the camera here in this case, but away from me. Cut this, each of these wings off, I'll fold out, try to get into the joint so that we're pulling that apart and, and releasing the joint. Then we'll have the opportunity to fold the leg and thigh out. There will be some, some skin here that we'll trim out. And so we get this opened up, I will remove the leg and thigh as one large piece. Again, as we trim that meat apart, we will be pulling away from that, and that will open that uh, joint up, the, kind of a ball joint on the end of that hip point. We'll slice that loose, and then we'll have that unit of meat, which we can separate then the leg and the thigh. Uh, sometimes you might want to keep the leg and the thigh together as a serving unit, depending on kind of what your family's desires uh, and, and eating patterns might be. Uh, particularly if you're looking at a turkey and a large deal, while well, you're definitely going to separate those. And in fact, you may well cut the dark meat away from the thigh and serve it as, a, as thigh meat. Typically a chicken, you would serve it bone in. And then as, after we've removed wing, wing, thigh, thigh, split uh, the thigh and leg pieces apart, then we will we'll, we'll go after the breast meat and we'll remove the breast meat and then get it out separately so that we can slice that into thinner slices and makes it very nice for serving and also sets you up for real nice leftovers for cold turkey sandwiches, cold mm -hmm. chicken sandwiches, etc. like that. So Perfect. that's kind of plan A. And All right. We'll, we'll, See how dirty we get, <laughs> and greasy, etc. So All right, let's get started. I'll just randomly cut this uh, mm -hmm. twine, and it is thick. But we're going to pull this apart. Tie them really well. 
Great. And the bird is warm, fresh out of the oven. Oh my, look how tender that is. It's just falling apart. So we're going to maybe have a little difficulty coming. Yeah, the bone and all comes apart. So we didn't anticipate that, but we're going to pull that wing out. And uh, I still have quite a bit of meat there, but we'll clean that up as we get to that. Um, again, this side, oh, we did a wonderful job on this meat. So moist. Gonna do a little bit better job here on pulling this off the tether, but still you'll notice that it's so tender, meat is falling off the bone. And nice and juicy, again, adding that to our serving tray. Mm. We'll begin to pull this off. You'll see that there is some, some skin here that I'm slicing through. And then we're gonna to wanna to stay fairly close to this tail and the meat that's close to the bump, to the body, as we work our way in here. You'll see this bone start right there is that hip bone. Going to, this is an easy one, Ann. You got me a good one here. <laughs> As the meat is so tender, it's literally falling off the bone. So we have this thigh leg. We'll pull this the same way. Probably can't see, maybe necessarily from the camera view, but again, we're cutting that, that skin. Um, Slicing in here as we open that up, you quickly see this bone pop out. It fell apart. It fell apart. So now we have two two leg leg thigh pieces for our purposes this evening's meal. Why we're going to separate these two? I'm going to be careful to cut that uh, skin. It needs a little bit of resistance behind it to get cut through. Again, we're opening up another joint here in the middle. It pops open. We can slice right against the wood. We're going to serve this leg over in this area. Well, I like to leave the, the uh, skin with it. It's uh, customer preference, I guess, on whether you eat that, but it certainly keeps the moisture associated with that. Start to slice this open. You may be able to tell the way that we've prepared the bird is to do a dry brine and you can see the seasoning underneath the skin, especially on the breast there. Uh, so we rub some oil underneath the skin directly on the meat and then have a mixture, a seasoning mixture of some different herbs and salt to, to give it a lot of flavor. Okay, so now I've essentially got this armless, legless animal and uh, we can slice this a little bit here, I'm going to just open this up a little bit and uh, it's going to give me a chance to access the main part of the bird. So right down the breastbone, we're going to open that up. I'm going to try to feel where that bone is. What I'm trying to do is stay really close to that Breastbone, I'm going to roll out a nice chunk, primarily white meat. Um, you know, if you were to have a heritage bird, it probably won't have quite as much white meat. That um, by selection, the American consumer has asked for white meat. So the poultry industry has bred for that characteristic but your heritage animals will have less of that. Again, you can see I laid out that breast. Back when we were heart cut, cutting chickens up for fryers, why well, we would have sliced through here and, and, and developed the wishbone, pulled the wishbone out of this. I'm gonna leave this here for now. Go ahead and attack the other side. You can see that I've opened this up. Breast bone mm -hmm. has been removed right here. This is a cartilaginous uh, material that's soft. You don't want a really sharp knife. You really don't want to cut into that. We're going to try, again, I ordinarily wouldn't take this much time, but you slice through here. But basically what we're trying to do is just pull all that white meat out together. Probably give you where you can't see it again. But as you notice, I forgot to pick up my, my uh, fork, and so I'm getting my fingers all nice and tasty. 
and I will resist the temptation to lick them off. So now we have two nice pieces of breast meat. This piece, um, multiple things one can do. There's still some meat on here that can be trimmed off if you want to be aggressive about it. But we've discussed earlier that we're kind of like the idea of having something for some stew meat. And so we're going to just kind of go whole unit right into our stock pot. And, but in the meantime, I am going to use my fork and I'm going to go ahead uh, again, this meat uh, striations are kind of going this way. It's such a tender piece of meat now at this point, but it's going to be much better to slice it at about a 90 degree angle the way that meat uh, has grown. Against the grain. Yeah, against the grain, if you will. And uh, we're just going to lay those out. You can see how so tender. Beautiful. And juicy this is. So while he's slicing, I'll show you that in our pot now we have the whole carcass of the of the bird, and this is going to make really really delicious chicken broth. So we also saved the giblets here, which are the heart, kidneys, liver of the of the chicken. Sometimes these are in a bag like this. Sometimes they're they're loose. You can see these are very very strong flavor of meat. So it works really well when you put it into the, um, this, this broth, it'll give it really good flavor. This is actually a neck bone. Sometimes that's still attached to the chicken. You can either cook that or cut it off beforehand. Sometimes they remove it for you. So we'll just fill this with water. You could also add additional seasoning if you'd like. I prefer not to add salt to my chicken broth because then I'm able to flavor it when I am making whatever I am and I have a lot more control for the end product. Uh, but if you would like to add some rosemary, thyme, parsley, uh, I would recommend adding the same seasoning that you put on the on the bird in the first place. But you can fill this with water and then let it uh, boil, simmer for a really long time. You could let it simmer for several hours. You could put it in a slow cooker and actually let it simmer overnight. The longer the, the cook time, the, the better the flavor. So that's going to end up with some really, really nice broth. You can, after it's all done, you'll want to strain all of the bones out. Sometimes there are some very small bones, so you want to make sure that you're straining it really well. And you can keep as much of that meat as you possibly can in the soup. It'll make really good chicken noodle soup or chicken pot pie, anything else that you use that broth for. Well, as you can see, while she's been visiting there, why I have uh, continued to start to harvest the and slice the rest of this uh, breast the other breast. And uh, again, such a nice, juicy and tender piece makes it somewhat difficult to cut, even though it's a very sharp knife. You'll notice on the first one that I inadvertently removed the skin, mm -hmm. so this one has no skin layer. This one I was a little more careful and I kept the skin there, slicing through it. so. It, each piece of this will serve with a tiny piece of the skin. And so here we have all, this is all white meat on this half. Perfect. And any of these other pieces that we uh, haven't put specifically to serve, they'll all end up in the stock pot for the, for the soup. Great. So that was less than 15 minutes. I think that's a that's that would be a personal best for me, but I'm sure it's not for you. <laughs> so maybe maybe the, the more often you do this, the, the easier it gets. So if you want a little practice before, before Thanksgiving, starting with a, a chicken is going to be a lot easier. This bird was about six pounds. A tur typical turkey is anywhere from 10 to 20, 25 pounds. They can get pretty big. So um, it's just a, a bigger scale of what you're what we're looking at here. But any leftovers store really well as well. So mm -hmm. I like to use leftover meat in um, chicken pot pie, in chicken tetrazzini, in sandwiches like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use the, the chicken just like you would deli meat instead, but it's a home homemade fresh option that tastes really, really good. Another quick uh, comment about the difference between a chicken and a turkey. Mm -hmm. A turkey is going to be much larger. That also means that some of the tendons and stuff are going to be much stronger. Mm -hmm. And so you will actually find some of those are starting to calcify in turkeys. And, and not, not so much in the breast meat, but in the leg area and the thighs and stuff, you'll find these uh, sinewy pieces 
and you just have to be careful of them. And, and you are, as you, if you've eaten a turkey leg, you know that those are in there. So Absolutely. You won't find that. That's kind of why it's fun to work with a chicken to start, because you don't have to deal with those aspects. Good practice. Yeah. All right. I think that's all we've got for you. Do you have any other no. last minute thoughts about chickens? So, it's been fun. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time, and sure. we're going to enjoy some great dinner tonight. So thank you all for joining me, and we will see you next week. Thank you.